It might seem absolutely scary and you might feel completely unprepared. However, you are able to do a good job in the group exercise of your assessment center because it's all about preparation and confidence. And confidence comes from preparation. So today I'm going to give you my top tips on how to do well in an assessment center and specifically in the group exercise of an assessment center. And I'm speaking from my own experience, having done a lot of assessment centers in my life, but also I was an assessor in an assessment center, um, which was a virtual assessment center for a big international company. So I know what it looks like from both sides. Let's go. So the first thing is that you need to adjust your strategies during the assessment center to the type of company that you're applying to. So what is their culture? What is What are their values? What is the industry that they work in? So is it a company that really values creativity or is it all about speed? You need to know these things and how you can find out is you can go on their website, you can look for some YouTube videos, uh, you can look for LinkedIn posts or you can even make contact with someone who works for the company so that they can tell you. Why do you even want to know all of these things? Because you want to know what kind of pieces and bits of your personality to put on display during the assessment center. So if it's all about creativity, then you should really double down on that and show, you know, your creative side during the assessment center. If it's all about speed at this company, then you want to be going, you know, coming up with ideas and moving on really fast and really getting the, the group during the discussion to, you know, make decisions and move on. And it's not about faking it. It's about knowing what's important and what from within yourself you should really show to the assessors. When I was an assessor, I was asked to rate each of the candidates that I was observing on how I think they would fit into the company. And that's, you know, culturally or the way that they work. So it's really no joke. You want to know what the company is looking for. Next one. <laughs> the next thing you need to be able to do is to read your case quickly and also make note or highlight the most important information from it. You will not have a lot of time to read the case. So you need to be able to understand what the most important things are and also be able to use those arguments in your discussion afterwards. So definitely practice, practice, practice beforehand so that you are used to the pace that will be expected of you on the day. My next point is related to being able to see the big picture. So I just told you how it's really important to find out what the most important information in your case is and then use it for making suggestions. However, you should also keep your eyes open for any secondary points that also might influence the decision. And then maybe you can, you know, throw them in in the discussion and say, hey, I think this could be a big risk. Let's list it. Let's see this as something that needs to be investigated further later on. This kind of shows the assessors that you are aware of other things that happen in the world and you won't just ignore everything just to get this done really quickly. You are able to see other things that also play into the situation. Always keep your eyes open for anything that might be important. Next, 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 next. Okay, you need to have commercial awareness. And what this means is what industry is the company in? What is the state of the industry? What is the competition? Where within the industry is the company positioned? Now, the case might not be about the company itself. It might be about a fictional company in the same industry or about a random company from a random industry. But there is a good chance that you will need some kind of commercial awareness. And it's just such a great thing if you can demonstrate it. So definitely prepare. Next, take initiative. And this can mean assuming the role of the leader in the discussion. So as soon as the candidates gather up for the discussion, you can stand up and say, hey guys, I think um, we could run the discussion as follows. Let's do five minutes of this topic, 10 minutes of this topic, and finally five minutes to prepare the presentation. Then you can take the pen in your hand, you can go to the board and offer to write down the ideas that people bring to the discussion and you can also contribute your own ideas. You can run the discussion like that. But what do you do if someone is faster than you and you can't become the leader anymore? 
well, then you can become the so-called facilitator. So you can offer to keep the time and at some point you can say, hey, I can, you know, take over the pen and uh, you can sit down and I will write down the suggestions on the board. So that way you can somehow creep into the leader role, you know, through the back door, which is also quite effective. Doing something like this will show that you can see that, you know, a role in the group is missing, no one is keeping the time, so you can offer to do it yourself. You kind of bring your own initiative into the situation, which is very good. More points for you, my friend. The next point is making sure that everyone contributes. And it's a very powerful thing because every leader, every good leader should be able to bring out the best of everybody and you can show yourself, you know, as a leader in this exercise, even though you're not the official leader of the discussion. So this is a sneaky way that you can use. Okay, so how do you do it? When you see that someone is a bit quiet, you can say something like, Hey, Josh, what do you think about this idea? Or what is your take on it? And what you do through that is bring that person into the conversation. But there's also one more sneaky thing that you can do through that. So imagine that that person says, my idea is this and that, or my opinion is this and that. You can quickly jump back into the conversation and say, I agree. On top of that, I think that, 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 that. So what you're doing is you're kind of adding to the conversation from your own end because you were the person who asked them a question. So it's okay for you to respond to whatever they say. And that's how you can also score points for yourself. That's double the benefits. So definitely do it. Next, bring structure to the discussion. If you notice that you're going a little bit in the wrong direction with the discussion, take this opportunity and say something like, Hey guys, um, we've already covered this topic quite broadly. How about we move on and do this and that next? And since we only have 12 minutes left, let's spend the next three minutes on this topic and then move on and do this other thing in the final nine minutes. Now, this is really powerful because it shows that you pay attention, you are aware of what the group should be aiming to achieve in, you know, in this exercise and you are not afraid to speak up politely when you see something going wrong and you're happy to offer your suggestions to help the team move forward after getting stuck. My next tip is be vocal. <coughs> Sometimes coming up with the right question that will steer the discussion in the right direction is enough to score your points and also kind of give you more confidence in the discussion. I remember in one of my assessment centers, we were supposed to choose a solution and, you know, we were discussing, oh, like this one is good, that one is good, and just like trying to pick one of them. Then one of the girls said something like, guys, we've been, you know, talking about this for a while now, we're not really getting anywhere. So how about we list all the reasons why we shouldn't go ahead with each of these solutions? And bingo. We actually really needed that kind of push. And you know, I could see one of the HR ladies making note of that. So that girl definitely scored some points with that statement. Even though she didn't express her own idea that would contribute to the discussion, she still did something that helped us move forward. And this is really important. Sometimes you just need to show your thought process around a problem and it's more important than actually achieving something in the task because they don't care about the result. They just want to see how you think and whether you are able to bring something into the conversation. The recruiters want to see what happens over here, so definitely show it to them. My next piece of advice is to respect the other candidates as your team members because it's not about being the loudest one in the room or being right at all times, but about being a good team player. This means don't talk over people, don't interrupt them unless it's absolutely necessary. For example, you're running out of time. Don't criticize, but rather ask clarifying questions. This way you will show to the assessors that hmm, maybe you don't agree very much, but you will remain polite and likable as you do it. And maybe the idea they have is actually good. So asking a clarifying question is always a good idea. You can't go wrong with that. Next, use good arguments. And that means data when defending your ideas. 
When you say to the group that they should go with your idea in the exercise, you should have data that proves that your idea is in fact the best one. These can come from the case and also from your commercial awareness, which we already talked about today. And if the assessors later in the presentation stage tell you that they think you should go with a different proposal, then you can always refer back to your data and insights to support the argument that the group is making. But what do you do if they keep pushing and, you know, they tell you, yeah, we think you should change your mind, you should do something else. Then you can say something like, Okay, thank you for the suggestions. Um, there's quite a few things that would need to be researched further. Uh, we're happy to take this on board. We will get back to you with a side-by-side -side comparison of these two ideas and then we can take this discussion further. It's okay to push back and say that you will get back to them once you have more information. It shows that you are willing to do the extra work that it takes in order for the company to make the best decision possible because you care about decisions being made based on data. Next, be open to other people's ideas and lose the smart way. Put your ideas out there, be able to defend them, but admit it when someone else has a better idea than you and focus on contributing to their idea. Losing the smart way means that if you decide that another person has a better argument than you, as you express your support, you should focus on building on their idea. For example, you can say something like this. You have made great points on why this campaign idea would work best. I support it. On top of that, I think this campaign will give us the best return on investment given the low cost and it will also give us the most shopper insights because we will be tracking the shopper's behavior on the app. This is how you add value and lose the smart way. Next, be okay with not knowing everything. Sometimes you won't know the answer to a question asked by a fellow candidate or an assessor. There are two good ways of managing such a situation. The first one, if you don't know something, you can ask for help in the group. I remember we as assessors marked such behaviors positively because they demonstrated self-awareness and also confidence because people were telling the truth despite being in a vulnerable situation. We need people to be honest in order to collaborate well. And now the second trick. If you are asked during your presentation for a figure which you don't know, you can always give a rough estimate and say that you will get back to them after the meeting with the exact figure. Now it might seem a bit funny because this is your presentation time and you are not going to speak to that assessor later, let alone get back to them over email. However, this is just to, to show that you can manage such a situation. You're being asked something you don't know, you give an estimate and then you say, I will get back to you. This is what happens in real life a lot. So it's actually a very good and natural way of handling such a situation. And also sometimes giving an estimate is actually enough. Next, be likable and genuine. They've already seen your CV. They've already spoken to you. They know you can do the job. However, what they don't know yet is what kind of team player you are. So be yourself, be likable and collaborative. Don't seem overly relaxed, like you don't care about the job. Show them that you are keen, that you are paying attention, that this whole thing is really important to you. However, I would say avoid fake smiling and looking overly hooked. <laughs> fake nodding. The assessors are people too and they can tell you're faking it. Small disclaimer though, if it's a virtual assessment center, then you might have to demonstrate your presence by a bit more smiling and nodding, but please don't overdo it. Speaking of virtual assessment centers, here's a few things that you should keep in mind if your assessment center is a virtual one. Make sure that your equipment works and that's your laptop, your microphone, your camera, your software, screen sharing feature, all of that. You should have good internet connection. If the one you have at home is not that good, then you can go to your friend's place or the university, anywhere where you can find a good internet connection. Also good lighting because you want them to be able to see your face. During your virtual assessment center, you should always be looking at the camera. 
This is to establish eye contact with the assessors or the other candidates. I know it's not real eye contact, but this is how they receive it. So definitely do your best to look at the camera at all times. Don't do this, don't look at yourself, but look at them. Also, you can use the opportunity to Google things on the side or use your calculator. However, if you are not supposed to do it, then I would say don't do it. I had this candidate once who used a calculator in order to do calculations which she was supposed to do without a calculator and we could tell that she used it and we had to mark her down because of this and that girl didn't get the job in the end so it's not worth it. If you have any questions let me know in the comments and I will definitely answer all of them. And if you ever want to find a job in a new field where you don't have any experience, then you can watch this video where I explain how to go about it. And also in this video, I explain why I think doing a graduate program is the best first step in your career. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.